the full armor of God. No secret that we have been dealing with, talking about, looking at spiritual warfare, and we are now looking at the spiritual armor that Paul tells us about in Ephesians chapter 6. We're talking about what that spiritual armor means to us, what it means, uh, what it's used for, what it is, how it affects our lives in general. And we have talked about two very important key factors regarding this specific spiritual armor that we are to put on. In order for this spiritual armor to be effective, it must be the full armor that we put on. The full armor. And it must be the armor of God. Putting on only part of the armor still does us vulnerable. And if we are vulnerable in any area of our lives, I guarantee you that's where the enemy will concentrate his attack. It will be in that area. One piece of armor out of place, one piece of armor not put on it at all, leaves us wide open to the enemy. We also discovered very specifically that the armor, if it's man's armor, has absolutely no value to it whatsoever. It has to be the armor of God that we put on. Man's armor is completely useless. It's ill-fitting and incomplete at its very best. Man's armor is not even worth putting on or wearing. It does not provide for us any protection. It gives us only false hope and it's guaranteed to end in failure just like it did for King Ahab. And those of you that have listened to the last few weeks will know what that meant. If we desire true protection from the enemy of this world, then the armor we put on has got to be the armor of God. A couple of weeks ago, before the Weersmas were here, we started out with the belt of truth. If you were not here, if you did not hear that message, I strongly urge you to listen to it. They are all always available on our website. You can log in, you can listen, you can download, you can get a free copy back at the Welcome Center. I encourage you to listen to it. It is important that you listen about the belt of truth because it is the first piece of armor that we are supposed to put on. And everything else hinges on that belt of truth. Everything else hinges on that belt. That's why it's the first piece that has to be put in place. It's, it's imperative that we listen, that we understand, that we know what that first piece represents before we consider any of the rest of the armor. Today we are going to look at the second piece. That's where we're at today. And we're going to read through our text regarding the armor. Ephesians 6, 11-18 Put on the full armor of God, so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of, belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. The second piece of armor, the one we're looking at this morning, is the breastplate 
of righteousness. The breastplate of righteousness. The most obvious thing about this particular piece of armor is what it protects. It protects all the vital organs of the body in, in terms of the actual physical piece of armor. It covers all those important issues from here to here. It takes care. It covers all of them. And the most important one being the heart. It protects the heart of the warrior. This piece of iron or bronze in some cases would hang off the soldier's shoulders. I had a practice to say that one clearly. It would hang off the soldier's shoulders and then it would be connected to and securely fastened by that belt that the soldier would be wearing. It connected to the belt of truth that we talked about. If the belt would be loosened up or for some reason not secure, the breastplate would not stay in place as it was supposed to. I'm sure if we, if we think about this, if we try to picture it in our minds, we can pretty clearly understand the importance of this particular piece of protection. How vital it is to us. Without it securely put in place, a soldier in the midst of battle will certainly fall to death. Because he's left wide open and vulnerable. The value of this particular piece, as MasterCard would say, is priceless. It's priceless. It's incredibly important. Now just a moment ago, I said it's, it's the key protection of our heart. All the organs, yes, but our heart was that key piece that we talked about. And this is not just true physically, but this is it, it applies to us spiritually as well. Let's look at Scripture and what Scripture says about spiritually protecting our heart. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Above all else, guard your heart, for it is a wellspring of life. Above all else, Guard your heart. If you take any time to read through Scripture on a consistent basis, you'll see all throughout Scripture, all throughout the New Testament, how Jesus talks about man's heart and the importance of man's heart and guarding man's heart because He looks at the heart of man. He doesn't look at the outside like you and I do. And that's exactly what we do. We look at the outside of people and we make judgment calls real quick and real easy. Jesus doesn't look at the outside of people. He looks at the inside. He looks at the heart of a person. What is their heart like? Is their heart right? Is their heart clean? Is their heart pure? Or is their heart dirty and gross and disgusting? What is their heart like? That's why He tells us above all else, guard your heart. <clears throat> the guarding of our heart spiritually is every bit as important as guarding it physically. Because either one of them left unprotected results in death. Before we keep going with the breastplate, I want to concentrate on two words this morning for just a minute. They were the very first two words we read at the beginning of our text in Ephesians. They were these two words, put on. Those were the first two words from our text, put on. See, we are instructed to put on the armor. Why is that important? Because this tells us pretty plainly that it's not automatically placed on us. We don't come armor clad. It's not an optional feature that we can order and have delivered and, and installed permanently. We have to put on the armor of God. It requires purposeful action on our part. 
We don't get to wish it, get to hope for it. It requires purposeful action. We have to make some very important decisions regarding this armor and putting it in place. These decisions that we make affect what armor we're putting on. If it's God's armor or if it's man's armor. Let's take a look this morning at some of the things that affect our decision in putting on this breastplate of righteousness. We're going to start with Romans chapter 12 and verse 3, where in part it says this, Do not think of yourself more highly than you ought. Matthew 23.12 follows up with this, For whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Let that sink in for just a little bit this morning. Humbleness, humility is a key feature. Every one of us that are here this morning, every one of us that are listening to this need to understand something. We are sinners. We live in a sin-sick world. Guess what? We don't have all the answers. I don't care how smart you are. I don't care what your IQ is. You don't have all the answers. I don't have all the answers. Let me share something else with you this morning. And this is going to be startling to some of us, I know. Life is not all about us getting what we want. Life is not all about having things our way. Life is not all about pleasing myself. That's not what life is about. See, we, as I just said, are sinners. And as sinners, you know what we deserve? Absolutely nothing. In God's sight, in God's expectations, in general, as sinners, we deserve absolutely nothing. Nothing good, anyhow. I'll go there. Through Jesus Christ, we have everything. We have absolutely everything. But we deserve nothing. As long as we are consumed with ourselves, as long as our humility is being pushed aside, as long as we are consumed by our own desires, there is no way in the world we will ever be able to secure the breastplate of righteousness this breastplate of righteousness in place. You see, what's going to happen is we're going to put on self-centeredness or self-righteousness. And it's going to get in the way. That's what we're going to buckle on as long as we're prideful, self-centered people. We have to get rid of that element in our lives in order to truly put on God's breastplate of righteousness. Let's look at something else that can be a hindrance. 1 Peter 5.8 be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. This piece of Scripture, this piece of text right there, one little verse, tells us very clearly that the enemy is looking for us. He is prowling around. He is on the hunt. He is trying to find his next prey. And if we are careless people, we have a problem. The enemy is going to find us. Carelessness is another problem for us to consider when it comes to putting on that breastplate. See, if we pay absolutely no attention to the warning signs that we have been given, we are going to fall prey to the enemy. We have got to pay attention to the warnings that God continuously gives us we cannot think that they apply to someone else. We cannot think that they are for a day, an age, or a time that has passed. We cannot think that the word, that the warnings, that everything we've been given do not apply to the modern church today. Every bit of them apply to us. And if we are careless with the Word of God, then we do not have that breastplate of righteousness on, nor can we put it on. 
if we are careless with the warnings that we have been given. Odds are if we're careless with those warnings, the belt of or the, the, the breastplate of righteousness is the least of our problems because we haven't even securely fastened the belt of truth. And it's the first piece that must go on. Here's another issue. What about unbelief? Unbelief is another problem that affects us when it comes to spiritual armor. Hebrews 3.12 See to it, brothers, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. What does that mean? We talked about it a few weeks ago. God is 100% truth. We have got to abide by the truth or we can't move past that point. If we cannot accept, live by, understand, dwell in the truth, then don't even worry about taking another step or moving any further. It has to come first. To doubt Him, to doubt His Word in any way, shape, or form simply results in kinked and ill-fitting armor. Armor that is clearly not God's armor. I could go on and on this morning about talking about uh, things that, are, that cause problems, that are a hindrance, that are an issue when it comes to putting on the armor. Here's a few ideas. How about disobedience? How about unforgiveness, or jealousy, or rage, or lust? All those things are issues when it comes to putting on the armor. There is one other thing that I want us to think about though this morning, and we're going to talk about it just for a few minutes. Because this one other issue that we're going to look at is a huge problem in the church today. A huge problem. And we need to be aware of it, and we need to deal with it. 1 John 4.1 Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone into the world. This actually takes us back to our conversation about relative truth. See, way too many Christians have given in to what our society has deemed to be okay. And that's a problem. We've given up testing the spirits. We've given up speaking against false teachings. In other words, here's what we've done as as a group of believers, as a church, as a body. Here's what we've done. We've established our own standards for righteousness. And they're based on popular belief. That's what we've done. We've created our own standards. As long as we abide by the majority rules concept, and we we discount or we push away the absolute truth that we have been given, the breastplate of righteousness will never, ever, ever fit. It will never protect us. It will never be what we need to stand against the enemy. It'll never be the armor that it is meant to be. Isaiah tells us in 57.12, I will expose your righteousness and your works and they will not benefit you. Understand, self-made, self-righteousness, righteousness based on popular belief, or in what the majority says, okay, will absolutely fall apart. It will not benefit us in any way. Just a few verses later, Isaiah takes the time to, to even illustrate the value of our righteousness. Isaiah 64 and 6, we know this. All of us have become like one who is unclean, and all of our righteous acts are like filthy rags. All of our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We cannot rely on our own inconsistent thoughts or desires. That's why we have been given a righteousness that goes far beyond anything we can do or earn or achieve in ourselves. We have been given 
the righteousness that we need. What is that righteousness? 2 Corinthians 5.21 God made Him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in Him we might become the righteousness of God. What are we talking about here? Of course, we're talking about the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We're talking about the sacrifice that He made on the cross of Calvary for you and me so that our sins can be forgiven. That's what we're talking about there. It is by that act alone that we have been given the righteousness of Jesus to wear in our battle against sin. Did you get that this morning? Or are we all asleep out there? That act alone gives us the breastplate of righteousness to put on every day so we can stand against the enemy and the sin that he tempts us with. Jesus' sacrifice, Jesus' unchanging love is our breastplate of righteousness. 1 Corinthians 1.30 It is because of Him that you are in Christ Jesus who has become for us wisdom from God. That is our righteousness, our holiness, our redemption. Our breastplate. The one that we are supposed to put on. The one that will fit properly and securely with that belt of truth that we've buckled around our waist is Jesus Christ, the King of kings and Lord of lords. As I just said, putting on that breast starts with the belt of truth like we talked about before. We need to recognize our position in Christ It is vitally important that we understand who we are. And John 15.5 gives us a little glimpse of that. It says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. As believers in Jesus Christ, as saved individuals, we are to be in Christ, a part of Christ. Not standing off on our own somewhere. Not doing our own thing. Not trying to make our own way. That means wholly, completely, totally surrendering to God. To His will. To His plan. And let me just add, whether it makes sense to us or not. We have a hard time with that one. We must remain in Christ. We must walk where He leads. We must do what He commands. We must obey as He teaches. Matthew 6.33 tells us very clearly, seek first His kingdom and His righteousness. That's number one. Seek first His kingdom and His righteousness. If you were to go home today and look up, grab your Webster's Dictionary, go online, whatever, if you were to look up righteousness, here's a definition you would find. The quality of being morally right or justifiable. The quality of being morally right or justifiable. So righteousness is being morally right. Who gets to decide if we are morally right? Do you get to decide? Do I get to decide? Do our neighbors or our co-workers or our boss or society in general get to decide? There's only one person, one, that can truly say if we are morally right, and that is God. God alone is able to make that decision. No one else. God alone. So to be righteous is to be made right before God. And that can only, only take place through our faith in Jesus Christ. That's the only way. There is no alternative paths. There's no multiple decisions. There's one way for that to take place. And it's through our faith in Jesus Christ. We in and of ourselves are completely useless 
when it comes to righteousness. There's nothing we can do, no decision we make, no act can be a part of that makes us right before God. It only happens through Jesus. Understand this morning, this breastplate of righteousness allows us to someday stand before God and receive eternal life with Him as forgiven sinners. That breastplate allows us to stand before our Creator. To hear Him say, well done, come on in. The breastplate guards our heart, which the enemy is relentlessly after. Relentlessly after. But we are made right by the grace of God through Jesus. That's how that is. As I said, as believers, someday we're going to stand there. We're going to have to give an account to God of everything we did in this life here on earth. And the accuser, the enemy, Satan, is going to throw out all kinds of stuff. All the bad decisions we made, all the terrible things we said, all the attitudes we had. Uh, He's going to constantly accuse us of all this junk that we've done in our lives. And without that breastplate of righteousness on, God's going to see that and He's going to be forced to say, out of my sight, you cannot be here. I cannot live in the presence of sin. You are not welcome here. It is only because of that breastplate that we are made clean. God looks at us with that breastplate of righteousness on and He says, oh, I don't see anything wrong. I see the purity of My Son. I see the cleansing of My Son. I see a clean heart because of what my son did on the cross of Calvary. We wear that breastplate of righteousness given to us by Jesus. God sees a clean, forgiven soul. But on our own, in our own attempt, He sees only dirt and disgust and sin. Our self-righteousness, our man-made armor, would never ever hold up to Satan's accusation. God would only see those filthy rags that Isaiah talked about. And because He can't tolerate sin, He would be cast from His presence for all eternity. We have to put on the breastplate of righteousness today. And in doing that today, we remind the enemy that we have been made clean. That we are new creatures in Christ. That we have been bought with a price. That we have one who intercedes for us on our behalf day after day, decision after decision. We have one who has made us clean. The breastplate of righteousness gives us strength to move through and past those temptations to avoid sin. To avoid those tripwires of the enemy. As the breastplate continues to protect our heart, it guards us and helps us to grow in our purity before God. And only with that breastplate of righteousness securely in place can we ever pray the way David prayed. Psalm 51.10 Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. If that breastplate is not in place, don't bother praying that prayer. God cannot create a clean heart if we simply allow junk and garbage and filth to continue to enter it. Because it will enter faster. It will just continue to come at us. If we put up that breastplate, put on that breastplate that God has given us through His Son, then He can begin to take our heart and purify it and cleanse it and make it new. Make it beautiful. Make it clean. Make it whole. 
Remember what we said at the beginning of our message this morning? Proverbs 4.23 Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. If we're not guarding our heart, we're in trouble. We're on a downward slope awfully fast. A holy heart sets its sights on loving God. And hear this, it's not just loving God, it's loving God more than anything else. Anything else. There is a lot of us that have a lot of anything before God. Myself included. I struggle every day to get rid of the anything that is out here that's hindering me from Him. And every day it's something different. Every day it's something new. Every day there's something I have got to pull down and get rid of so that it can be me and We've got to get past the anything that stands in the way. As soldiers for the King, as soldiers for Christ, we have to be consumed with His plan, with His goal, with His agenda. And nothing else can be as or more important to us. Absolutely nothing. That's hard for us to grab a hold of. Well, God, You don't want me to hate my kids or my family or my job or my this or my that. No. That... The point is, He's first. Do our kids ask us to do stuff that is wrong in God's sight, then that has to be no. Doesn't mean I don't love my kids, but the answer has to be no. My boss asks me to do something that's wrong in God's sight, I'm not doing it. We shouldn't do it. Does that mean we get fired? Maybe. But what's more important, being fired from your job or disobeying God? Which one would you prefer? Which one would you rather answer for? God has got to be first. The anything has to go away. Our central focus has got to be Jesus alone. If we have on the right righteousness, which is Jesus, Satan's claws will not be able to penetrate our armor. He will not be able to get to our heart, and therefore destroy our lives eternally. I don't know how else to say that. Our heart matters, not just physically, but eternally. And we're told to guard it above all else. We need to make the decision to put on the armor of God, including this breastplate of righteousness that He has given us to wear. So which breastplate do you want to put on this morning? You want to keep wearing the man-made armor? Are you willing to put on the armor of God? Which may mean making tough decisions. may mean making unfavorable decisions. But again, I challenge you, is it more important to be earthly minded or eternally minded? Which one matters more? We have to put on the armor of God, including the breastplate of righteousness, which is Jesus Christ.